We begin at the Brickyard, where the final 11 spots for next weekend's Indianapolis 500 were up for grabs Saturday. Hi, everyone. I'm Condi LeGrand. The major news from the Speedway is that defending Indy winner Buddy Rice will not get a shot to repeat. As first reported by Robin Miller on SpeedTV.com, Rice was not given medical clearance to compete. Rice was hurt in a practice crash 10 days ago when he backed his Ray Hall Letterman ride into the turn two wall. He was held out left last weekend's qualifying because of a concussion and bruised back. This week, further evaluation revealed a torn spinal ligament in his neck. Rice will be rechecked in three weeks, and ironically, his replacement is Kenny Brack, the man Rice filled in for last May. Brack was seriously hurt in this horrific crash at Texas in October 2003. Rice is disappointed, but happy for his teammates. I know for sure if there's any way I could do it, I'd, I'd be out there. I don't feel bad, but you know these are the these are the breaks. This is the way it goes, and uh, it's motorsport racing. That's what happens when you go, you know, this fast and things happen. But uh, at least one of my good buddies is in the car, and uh, hopefully he can, uh, you know, I'm repaying the deal a little bit because I think he'd really like another shot at it here, and uh, hopefully we're giving him a, a proper opportunity. It's a good team and it's a good car, so that helps a lot when you get into it, you know. And uh, you gotta. Uh, get back into all the fuel mixtures. You got to get back into doing pit stops. You got to get out in, back into the traffic things, in and out laps, and keeping track of changes. Uh, I think uh, I've been around here before, and uh, it's, it's it's good. Here is Brack about to embark on his historical run. The 1999 Indy 500 winner takes to the track and makes his mark. The fastest qualifier to date, the first guy faster than the pole sitter since Ari Leyendijk in 1996. Props from Rice, who rags him just a little bit. Ryan Briscoe nearly took a big tumble last Sunday for car owner Chip Ganassi. The Australian is back on track this week to qualify 24th outside of row 8. Patrick Carpentier tags the wall on his first run. He would wave this one off for repairs, but come back to clock in 25th. AJ Foyt IV is the youngest driver to qualify for the 500, but his first attempt this year goes up in smoke. Grandpa AJ wasn't too happy about Toyota's troubles after repairs. Foyt made it to 28th. Flashback to Friday the 13th there. Paul Dana slams his car hard into the turn two barrier. Injuries will keep him out of the 500. That opens the door for Jimmy Kite, who replaced Dana in the car and put it in the field 32nd. Others who qualified today, Ed Carpenter, Jacques Lazier, Marty Roth, Larry Foyt, and Jeff Ward. One spot remains. It will likely go to Ari Leyendijk Jr., who passed his rookie test today. The son of the two-time winner brushed the wall Saturday. It's all the talk to come out of Saturday's session, Brack's comeback and speed. Let's hear Robin Miller's take on this ironic twist. Hi, Robin. Hey, Connie. Well, Brack is back is obviously the story. Everybody was cheering for the meatball because of what he went through. I went and saw him in the hospital a lot when he was here, and it's an amazing the guy's walking again, let alone driving a race car at 227 miles an hour. That was one of the big stories. The other big story, they didn't get the field full. Ari Leyendijk Jr. is the last guy. He brushed the wall. He's going to get a chance tomorrow. If he doesn't qualify tomorrow at Reigns, they'll probably start him at the back because they're definitely going to have 33 cars. But nobody could outshine Kenny Brack today. Yeah, it was pretty close, but uh, I saw all the speeds on the dash, and you know, it's uh, we didn't go out trying to be the fastest car in the field because we probably could have spent some more time working on the qualifying setup. But uh, that's the way it turned out, and it's great. I'm very happy for it, you know. And now we need to get the car ready for the race. You've got to be really close to a perfect setup because when you've got push, it, it's not easy to drive. And like that qualifying run I did today, it wasn't easy with it pushing off the turns, and uh, I would have liked a little bit more of a neutral car, but. You know, definitely on pole day we went a bit too far, and uh, that's what's special about this place. You just got to be right on it all the time. We got bumped last week, and we had a, a run this morning where the car jumped sideways on me in turn one. And in the old days, that would have been this last one would have been our last attempt. So we knew that we had, you know, two more attempts today, and, and uh, we were confident that we had the speed. We we got a little conservative after the car jumped sideways, but. No. In all reality, I'm very pleased with the progress. It's been sad, you know, we couldn't get above 220 and the car was just slow and whatever we did, it didn't seem to work out and finally found a little bit of speed and we're close to 223 now. So for us, it's like having a pole position. It's hard to get big chunks out of these cars. I mean, you can tr keep trimming them out, trimming them out, and it's just hard to gain big chunks. So it's the way the formula is right now, but it, it's competitive. The, the field's still fairly tight, even though some cars are a lot stronger, but we're in the show now, so that's all that matters.
Kenny Brack, as you know, he won this race in 1999. He won the Zyral Champion, and, and I think after he got hurt, Derek, you know, you know, a lot of people said, "Well, we'll never see him again." And I really believed you probably wouldn't. He was just going to run touring cars or something like that. But when he got the opportunity to drive this car, one of the seven or eight can win it, he forgot about his injuries. You were hurt really bad in, in Michigan in 1984 in an Indy car. Just talk about what you think he went through. It was it that mindset? I'm only going to race if I can win. Well, it, it's really interesting. I got hurt pretty badly, just like he did. I was never the same racing driver when I came back, particularly on super speeders, because when you know the consequence of being injured that badly, I don't think you can quite bring yourself to the ragged edge. That's what surprised me about Kenny even making the decision to try this again. But as you say, he had a comfort level and a comfort zone, knowing this car can do it. All I got to do is wheel this thing around. I think he surprised himself though with the sheer speed. He got from that thing well and he's always he's an he's a self-proposed engineer himself and he's screaming and yelling all morning hey we got to trim this thing out and he's running 227 and 228 <laughs> so i think the thing that's interesting is he's the first guy since ari lion in 96 that went faster than the pole sitter of course he starts 23rd when the car's that fast it doesn't matter where he starts does it I uh, know no not in a 500 mile race and there are many people that were here today that watch that that would argue that this is by far the biggest story of the month of May because it's got emotions it's got human drama involved in it. and Robin you know from the old days that's what this place always had. Well, the, Dan, they had Danica Patrick, the biggest story last week, and they got Kenny Brack, the biggest story this week. And it's like A.J. Foy says, you can't let a girl beat you. And, of course, he didn't. That means that Danica and Kenny Brack may be on the David Letterman show soon. Well, I would think that might be a chance. <laughs> yeah. But I think the thing that's interesting is, is he said when he started his run, Derek, he said, you know what? He said, I didn't go out there to set any records. But he said, when I looked down at the dashboard and saw how fast I was going, he said, I thought, what the hell? I might as well try and have fast time. And it was a great surprise to everybody. The car gives you the messages. He loads what he saw on the dashboard, and it'll be headlines on all the newspapers around here tomorrow, probably nationwide. Well, with or without bumping, we'll talk to you guys tomorrow night. Here's the front row for the 89th Indianapolis 500. For the first time in 14 years, it's made up entirely of former series champions. Reigning champ Tony Kanaan has the pull. Sam Hornish is in the middle. Scott Sharp is on the outside of row one.